<laughs> yeah. Hello? Hello? Is this thing on? Hello and welcome to Remote Gardener. I'm uh, Gardener Greg. I'm Flora Former Fred. And we're going to be talking this week about our hydroponic systems. This is an idea that Fred came up with years ago. Uh, waste not, want not. Right. That uh, you can use recycled two liter bottles to grow plants out of. They're plentiful and easy to come by. That's a fact, although we are running out of them pretty quick. <laughs> right. Well, when you start getting into the hundreds, yeah, you have to start tapping your, your people on the shoulder that drink a lot of soda. <laughs> <laughs> now, with this system here, uh, it's a very small system. Uh, this is something that you could put pretty much on your back balcony or your backyard, anywhere that you really want it. And you just have a reservoir down on the bottom. And if you notice here, the uh, water reaches a certain height and then overflows and goes back down into the reservoir. Yeah, you can see the tube that the water is coming out of, and actually the tube right next to that is the one you'd adjust the height on, just, uh, customize it to the depth of water you want. And uh, there's also, you'll notice on the piece that overflows, there's a little hole in the top, a little dot. Nope, you you, you want to have that, because if not, all your water that you pump up will go out. It'll create a siphon and suck them right back down again as soon as it fills them, yeah. So you yeah. have that. you got to break the siphon on there. And you can see where it's fed, too down on the bottom there um, it's fed actually from the reservoir down below so the pump goes up pumps everything up and then when the pump kicks off everything flows back out through the pump gravity fed yeah. that's the best way to do it now um, on the uh, very back section there you see here that's how, how you attach a bottle half inch PVC um, a little half inch uh, riser coming out of that T that you see there and the bottle just slips right on easy as you please yeah it makes it easy especially if you use Pepsi bottles because they fit half inch PVC just right we found a um, uh, lot of other bottles wobble, and you might have to put something on there, let it run for a while till the grit kind of um, seals the system. Another note might be the way you cut the PVC, too. Uh, you want to use one of the uh, scissor-type cutters. They make a nice, clean cut. If you try to use anything else, it may leave burrs or mushroom out the PVC on the end a little bit, making it a little more difficult to get the bottles on. So you might want to keep that in mind. That $8 for that uh, PVC cutting tool is definitely necessary. Well worth it. You don't want to do it with a hacksaw. Right. <laughs> um, this is a system that we built uh, several years back, actually, and started off with just one liter bottles. Were those even one liter? I think they were. Yeah, they're 20 ounce, I believe. It's probably a little more than a liter. but You know, and again, that's something you could put really anywhere with a system like that. You can see the reservoir on the left-hand side just using an old bucket, you know, and and mix your nutrients inside there. We took the one liter bottle system and we expanded it and made this. And uh, this doesn't look like much right now, but uh, what do you see the later pictures and see how it's progressed? And as you can see, the, the system is very modular. You can set it for any shape or any deck or any place in a garden that you may have. Uh, you do it two by two, three by three, uh, really. Yeah, uh, and really all you really need to do is level it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. leveling is about the most critical thing about it. Other than that, any shape or form you want. And this is, uh, again, these are previous pictures. Um, if you look at the um, one liter bottles, they're actually filled full of rocks. Um, we used rocks as a medium, um, just trying to do um, regular lava rock and things like that. And it worked okay, but eventually, you know, of course, you end up with plants that can be root bound. Um, and you can expand this system. You can make it larger. This is one of the larger racks that we built this year. And uh, that one um, from last year, actually. And this is one that you can really see that uh, you can make as many on it as you have a reservoir and a pump and how level you are. Um, the further away you get from center, the more level you need to be to make the entire system run correctly. Um, although we've found a way around that too. Right. I was yeah. looking for shortcuts, yeah. Definitely. Now take a look at this system here. These are also one liter bottles and they've got tomato plants in them. This is a few months later. Um, you see a lot of shows out there that turn around and they'll... They'll show you how they build the system, but then they never show you what no it actually does. There's no yeah. follow-up. I mean, this, this system here went great. And in fact, these plants got so um, packed full of roots in one liters that we had to change the bottles out. Yeah, we ended up with uh, like three-foot tall plants. Uh, just as they started fruiting, we noticed that they were very packed inside those 22-ounce uh, bottles or whatever they were. And uh, we decided to move it up to the two liter bottles, which was easy enough to do. Yeah, it made a huge difference. I mean, they were able to absorb more nutrient. Um, and so we decided at that point that we're gonna stick with two liter bottles. Yeah. And those plants, as you can see, those are doing great. And that's not even, uh, it's about midway through the season that year. For your larger plants, those are uh, tomatoes and peppers seem to really like the more room out of a two liter bottle. Your smaller plants, if you do herbs or something like that, they may only need the smaller bottles and, and you need a much, then you can get away with a smaller reservoir. 
And on this one too, if you notice on the lower right, that's actually an eggplant growing up. Yeah, there. yeah. You know, the eggplants eggplant loved and it, it. And they loved it. And we should do that again. I think maybe even outside. Right. You know, yeah. not so hard to set a system like this up outside. You know, maybe uh, dig a little trench and set the PVC down, plug bottles in. As long as you could have the reservoir lower than the rack. Yeah. Right? You have to remember <laughs> that uh, as you, you <coughs> pump to fill them, you're going to use uh, gravity. It's going to return back to the reservoir once the power is off. So the reservoir always has to be lower than your rack. Okay, so a little more about the system. This is uh, uh, starting with uh, peppers. Um, we did peppers in these, and we just cut the tops off the bottoms, off the bottles, the bottoms off the bottoms off the bottles. Oh, right. We just cut it straight off, and then um, we'd fill it full of rock wool. Well, rock wool's expensive. We had to get some kind of a chemical, which is the last thing we want to do to mix with the rock wool to get the pH. You on have to so condition it first. Had to condition yeah. it, and I don't want to, you know, anything like that. It's but, a pain. But we did have good results with this system. Uh, again, this is standard system. You can see here, there's the overflow set, overflow, and you can see the rock wool inside the bottles. Um, and that's what we ended up turning out. It did really, really well. That's it on the left-hand side there now. And you see that rack back behind the kids there? That's that original one. Those are all the 24-ounce or 1-liter bottles that we originally started with. And we got lots of tomatillos out of that. We had um, dill. We had tomato. We had peppers. We had... Um, Anything we could plant. Um, we'd even cut suckers off tomato plants and go take them over there and shove them in a bottle and let them root and then move them to a larger bottle later. Yeah, we had a dill. We tried some onions for the heck of it. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we even had, that's right, we did onions. We did yeah, and vermiculite even, and they, and they loved it. <laughs> onions just in straight vermiculite, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is the way we start the system. Uh, we take our little, uh, well, originally we would take uh, peat pellets and start seeds in them. Which meant we had to cut the bottles pretty precise to hold the peat pellets. <coughs> uh, if you notice, some of them are actually held up a little bit by uh, toothpicks and stuff like that, so the peat pellet wouldn't fall into the pot, which was kind of time-consuming. and Yeah, definitely. Uh, was You'd have to go adjust plants on a regular Plus, because you're cutting a smaller hole, you're cutting through the thicker part of the bottle, which makes that a little more tricky. And, and a little more dangerous. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> So then we would uh, start those off with just a reservoir next to them, and then that tank on the right-hand side that had the plants in it, that would actually fill. What did we have that fill? Uh, I forget how long it would take until it hit to a certain point and then just stop and then start draining yeah, right back out. Yeah, we didn't out, have right? an overflow on that, so yeah, it pretty much just siphoned itself back out. Yeah, that was a temporary just to get them uh, rooted and situated while we Used to the bottles, the yeah, and then we take the ones out of these that we like the best, that we know are adapted to the bottles well, and we just plug them right into a system. Yep, and they're ready to go. And they're ready to go. Um, and you can see this is our newest, well, this was last year's system, but this is our newest design on this. So instead of using peat pellets, we're using cups. Um, styrofoam cups, I'm thinking every time I get a thirst buster or something like that, I'm going to start saving it. Um, every time that I get a disposable cup, I'm going to save it. You know, Coffee cups work great, styrofoam, anything that can be cut and manipulated easy, especially if it has a nice uh, graduation as far as the small on the bottom, bigger on top, makes a nice funnel shape that fits into the holes you make so your holes don't have to be precise really at all. Yeah, then you can adjust them, and I mean, you can see it's, it's worked really well, actually. And the rim of the cup holds it, makes a nice lip, you don't have problems with plants falling into the bottles. Yeah. And you start it, you can see this, is the, just start the plants in the cups. So we make our own mixture for a nutrient, and we try and put a lot of, or of a soil, and then we try and put a lot of a coconut core in there, so that when it is wet, it expands and pushes itself into the cup. Right. You know, and keeps it held inside there, and when the roots are in it and it's in wet, it just holds it all in place. Then we take those, pop them right in. The drop them right in, yeah. Easy as that. And you're cutting through the thinnest part of the bottle. Um, they slide in. You can actually move the cup. You can pull it in and out. So you can move them from bottle to bottle rather than having to worry about moving bottled from location to location. Right. And it works great with even little planters. Yeah, even these are four inch pots that you'd find at most uh, nurseries or anything like that. And yeah, they, they fit in very well. Yeah. Also. Yeah. You have to cut the bottom of them off, so you see here where there's actually a line in that cup where it's split in half. So right the about the water exposed. level there, you can see, yeah, that below the water level, you can see the roots are exposed. And before, <clears throat> above that, this cuts down on the evaporation and all that going around the Yeah, top. it seals it a lot better than the peat pellets, too. Right. Definitely. Um, and yeah, they do produce roots. There is no doubt about that. And if you look at that, it's not a ball. They're all like kind of laying out on where they're at and able to get whatever nutrient comes by them. 
And that's a really, that's, I like that. That's mm -hmm. just forest of roots. That's there. just beautiful. And you'll notice that these bottles are wrapped in aluminum foil. Yeah, I figured that uh, <clears throat> most roots grow underground. A lot of roots will go away from light. And uh, so we start wrapping them with foil to cut down also on the algae that will like to grow and and uh, supplant a lot of your nutrients that you're putting in there, which you know, don't you want your nutrients to go to your plants, not to the, not algae, to the algae growing in the bottles. Yeah, yeah definitely. And this is that uh, initial system that we've shown you. And, I mean, look at that. It, it just got better and better and better. Nice dark leaves and the plants that need the dark leaves. There's a beautiful tomato. A little split here and there, but that's got to mm. do with weather. Beef steaks do that, too. <laughs> that's, that's the way a lot of beef steaks do, anyway. They, they'll split on the lobes. But we do certainly get some production out of two-liter bottles. There's that eggplant I was telling you about. <laughs> yeah, the white eggplant. Look at that. Really it's the it. size of a bottle. Yeah, you know? yeah, they, they were... They were 8 to 10 inches, just like they're supposed to be, and I think we got more per plant than you're actually supposed to get, because a lot of our plants were pretty laden with them. Yeah, they did really well. I want to do it again. And uh, cherry tomatoes, like you would not Once believe. Once again, yeah, and that's all one spray. That's all coming off of one branch. One branch. There. That was over, yeah, over 100 blossoms right there on one branch. That's insane. And there's more pictures of this on our website, too, that you can see as this continued to bloom and blossom and turn into tomatoes. Yeah, and that's just fantastic. I mean, that's you can say you think that's good. Yeah, you could say it's good. And All right. Yeah. That's a huge tomato, I and mean, we had some really big ones. Yeah, really good production for figuring that we're close to seven thousand feet here. So yeah, that's <laughs> this pretty is hard rather good. impressive to get oh, pl uh, one pound plus tomatoes. We usually get at least one snow in May. Yeah, and we <laughs> did that year too. May second, it snowed. Uh, only an inch or so, but that would be enough to stop your production in its tracks. And So this is a, really a recap of what we've been doing, and uh, this is where we are going and what we are doing. The first greenhouse that you're, you've been seen in this video are actually is already done. It's ready. It's got seeds getting ready to go into these systems here, and we've got a new greenhouse, which is three times the size of this one. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be bringing you a lot more of go growing, and uh, other than that, have a great day. Thank you from Gardener Greg and Flora Former Fred. Sharing the health by promoting well-being through quality products at remotegardener.com/store.